All right, guys, we're back. Uh, just a little bit of a closing video. This video didn't actually be as long as I thought it was going to be. Uh, it's my fault. Uh, I didn't do as much taping as I wanted to. Uh, that's something I need to work on myself because I'd like these videos to be a little bit on the longer side than what they are now. But uh, over time, I'll get better at this. Like, we're still new to it. We got the new sticker on the back window. I'll turn it around so maybe it won't be back. My sister got me this for for Christmas or my birthday or whatever it was. It goes with the Grim Reaper theme. Uh, unfortunately, it's a little smaller than the gloss. So here and on the other side, there's a little spot that I uh, didn't make it right to the edge. But uh, it's not that big of a deal. I got a couple stickers I'll throw there or something. Or I'll figure it out. Uh, we got the front end on the truck and uh it's fitting pretty well we ended up putting two more braces here and on the other side because before when you look at the hood from the front it would dip in the center where the scoop was and i wasn't a big fan of that so i wanted to at least put just something to hold the hood up and we ended up saying uh to hell with it we'll put the two more uh latches on it because i had two more i ordered six when i got them because i had that planned out but I wasn't sure if we were going to do it, but it's all done. Uh, the threaded rod for the links on the anti-roll bar didn't show up. So we didn't get that done. And I have to weld the mounts, but I can't weld the mounts on until I get the the rod so I can get them lined up right. Um, it's sitting at ride height now. I think I might drop the back one hole, which I'll drop it down about a half an inch. But I'm going to wait till I either get it back out in the driveway and I can actually stand back from it or till I get it on level ground. Like the garage, the, the floor in the garage is pretty uneven. It's all broke up. Um, but the driveway is not bad. At least it's pretty flat. So I can get a good idea of how it sits. The front's pretty close. Um, it's nice because I can still put a jack under the, fr the front end under the front bumper. Last year I couldn't. I think I raised it up about half an inch. So it's not that bad. Um, but the back, I think I might drop it down one bolt hole just to get that tire tucked up a little more. Like right now, it's as high as it can go on the adjustment on the back. And the, like I think it, there's six bolt holes. And then I have the bracket flipped upside down. So it's as high as it can go. But uh, I'm going to get that fixed maybe tonight probably on my next run off because i go to work now for seven straight which kind of sucks because it's night shift but we'll make a little bit of money because this what this pay falls on will be when we go racing so it'll be nice to have a little bit of extra money do a couple overtime and uh, be good to go we still have to do hook up the wiring just pardon the mess for the water pump the trans cooler the onboard air. Uh, I got a couple other things we got to hook up. We got the new transmission sitting right over there. Uh, got to get that bell housing cut off. Bell on it. The new BT converter sitting right here. Brand new, just went through inertia plate on it. So we should have good luck with this guy. Uh, thanks for uh, Marty Chance and Neil Chance Converters for going through that. He said everything was perfect, ready to go. Uh, the tranny is, uh, Jason McNeil. That's who that came from. Some, uh, supposed to be some goodies in that. So we're going to try and get that bell housing cut off and, uh, put on the transmission or taking off the transmission I have, and put the ultra bell on that one. So we're going to try that out and hopefully everything goes well. I'm going to bring this transmission that's in the truck to bond field with us as well just in case we have any problems i don't want to go there and make one pass and something happen to the transmission i believe jason mcneil is a good builder but i've never had one of his transmissions so i want to be on the safe side i know the transmission in the truck is good so i don't want to drive all the way there make one pass on a test and tune and uh something happened maybe a seal rolled or an o-ring is bad or something like that you never know with these kind of things. So if you have spare parts, it's good to bring them. I'm going to bring 
all my extra low dollar sensors. I'm going to have two extra because I changed two sensors. Um, I don't have any new trans brake buttons, so I should get a couple of those for spares. And uh, I don't know what else I'm going to get yet. I'm going to bring all my uh, extra braided line and any extra fittings that I have. <clears throat> um, maybe some of my wiring stuff and stuff like that. But my plan is for everything to be working, go through everything. Try out the brake, try out the bump, try out the two-step, make sure everything's good to go. Get a little bit more familiar with the Holly system, with the Terminator. Um, I'm going to be getting a hold of my tuner so I can ask him what I can play with at the track in regards to... i got to turn down the boost in this thing because it's very aggressive right now. Like, it'll damn near hop off the ground right now. It's like the old guys saying that their car would hop, coke, hop over Coke cans at the... Uh, at the stop sign while this thing will hop coke cans on the brake when you hit the bump so this thing don't fuck around but uh, i gotta get that turned down and uh i want to know how to adjust launch rpm so we can uh play around with it a little bit and not always stay on what he's got it set at so we can play around with it i won't be doing much for like changing fuel map or anything like that i don't know how to do that so i'm gonna stick with his map his uh all of his maps for fuel and boost and timing and all that i'm just gonna play with like launch rpm and uh boost off the line and maybe turn up adjust the fuel the the boost ramp a little bit that stuff i can do sorry i'm shaking it's a little cool in here i'm just wearing a sweater or a t-shirt but uh yeah i think it's gonna be a good uh Good turnout. I want to go take it for a little ride down down the road and make sure the brakes are working, make sure everything's 100% ready to go. Last year, my very first pass, I had adjusted the brakes. Everything seemed fine. I had drums on the back of it before. And uh, very first pass, I go down the track. I had brakes at the starting line, and as soon as I hit the brakes at the end, I had nothing. There was zero brakes. I rolled into the sand. Luckily, it only went in about eight feet or 10 feet or something like that. So I was able to just flip it in reverse and backed out, took it to the pits and the brakes were way out of adjustment. So I'm not sure if they adjusted in the, in the drums or what, uh, what really happened, but that was pretty scary. So now this year plan is I'm going to have a shoot. So if anything like that happens, um, <clears throat> I'll have a shoot. I can pull the shoot, but, uh, I don't know, we're going to, the shoot's supposed to be coming with the threaded rod and my seat, so hopefully that shows up soon, because I'd really like to have all that stuff before we go racing in a month, but, uh, yeah, I got a little bit of wiring to do, I got the Holly Dash showing up this week, hopefully the wastegate show up this week, I think they're supposed to be here on the 27th, if I remember right, I got to look at the shipping and see what's up, uh, I'm going to check all my, go over the suspension again, make sure everything's tight, all the steering, that's very important to do that. We got to do an alignment because I ran out of time with, with the guys. They had to go home. They got kids and work in the morning and stuff like that. They don't live here. They're One's an hour and a half away. The other ones are two and a half hours away. So it's, it's kind of an unfortunate in that sense. Like they can't always be here on a weekend or whatever like that. Like we got to coordinate our schedules but uh it's always good to have those guys here to help me out and this very team that's what it's all about we fed them and we all had a good time we had a fire there last night and some wobbly pops and it's always a good time when they're here dale and ricky they've been with me since uh pretty well the start i say ricky's been along since pretty well the start Dale came in, I think, a year after when I started building Reaper, the very first uh, edition of it, when it was uh, four-wheel drive. But Ricky was here before that. Ricky was here when I had my old uh, fourth gen Camaro. And then Ricky's actually the one that helped build the frame on this truck. Him and I built it in my old garage. So <clears throat> this truck is sentimental to me, but it's also sentimental to... Ricky to Dale to Tanner 
This truck's got a lot of sentimental value to all of us. This truck will never, ever be for sale. I'll, I'll take this truck to my grave. This thing, uh, I've been through a lot with it, so uh, it's not going anywhere. Um, I don't think we're going to cut the headlight holes out in it. I was going back and forth. I think I'm just going to get sticker kits, and I'm going to get two LED lights put down like near the bottom because I would like to have some kind of a light in the front just in case you're, we're out racing and it's starting to get dark. I'd like to have uh, a little bit of light just in case for a little bit more safety. And I don't know, maybe I'll hook up the brake lights for something just, just for a little bit more safety. But uh, we're going to see what I have time for before the race. May uh, May 20th weekend. It's just a test in tune, but uh, I'm hoping we're going to get a good baseline on uh, on this thing and and learn how it reacts. Now, last year we only had it on the base tune when we went out racing, but uh, now it's turned up some. We had time to take it to the dyno, and it we made just over a thousand horse and made a thousand point four on 19 pounds of boost and blew both head gaskets. But uh, we got a good set of heads on it now, good set of head gaskets. Um, so we're going to go to try, have fun. We'll probably only run it on 20 pounds of boost. I'm not sure what Trevor has it set for. I'd have to go look on the, on the laptop and check it out and see what all he's got. I'm going to have to get him to send me the updated, uh, updated tune files. And uh, so I can go from there and play around with it but uh he's going to a race the same weekend a no prep race so i won't really i can send him logs but i doubt he's gonna have time to uh to send him back and forth with me because he'll be racing as well and he's probably got customers there he's gonna be helping out so we're gonna do what we can and do some suspension adjustments and learn at that because i'm i'm still pretty new when it comes to that <laughs> It's not something I'm super familiar with, so I've got a few other guys that are helping me out in terms of bar uh, bar location. It's ladder bars on the back of this, so got to set that up. Um, compression rebound on the coilovers are double adjustable front and back, so they're helping me out with that. Um, I've sent all my way pictures, like when I scaled it, with me in it, without me in it to a few guys and I've got a couple settings that we're going to try and uh, and hopefully it works out well and uh, I'm not sure what it's going to do yet but uh, we're going to find out uh, as long as it goes straight I'll be happy I've got a number in mind I want it to go but if it doesn't make it there first weekend out no harm in that first uh, first weekend out on the year it's going to you never know what's going to happen. I might go out. I might snap an axle first pass. And I don't have spare axles for this thing. Because I'm not really planning on breaking one. But uh, you never really know if the track's going to have lots of bite. If it's if it's not. If there's so many variables. If the weather's good. If it's going to be dewy. And, well, if it's dewy, you won't be racing if it's too wet. But my barrel of fuel showed up. We run this thing on C85. Um, I got it off my buddy Kyle Knott last year and it ran good. It seemed to like it and it's cheaper than running C16 because I'm not intercooled on this thing. The next version will probably inter be intercooled. I'm not, nothing's hundred percent set for the next version of this thing, but kind of already have plans, but there's a lot of stuff in my personal life that is going to be happening in the next few years. So we're just kind of taking it one step at a time, but this thing is going to stay very similar to how it is now in the addition of a little more safety stuff. I want to get a funny car cage kit for this um, <clears throat> and a hands device with a brand new helmet. It's on my list of stuff to get, but uh, hopefully that happens. That's That's kind of starting to be close to the top of the list now with everything getting the truck running and everything because that's obviously number one if it doesn't run we're not going racing but a 45 gallon drum worth a few to buy in the little cans i did all the math and it was way cheaper to do it that way and uh it's nice not having to lug around all the little cans all the time so we'll bring 
the two cans will bring the barrel and I need to get a pump but uh, I'm gonna play it like that this is the first time I've ever bought it by the big barrel but with C85 like you burn so much of it it's not as bad as methanol but it's worse than uh, race gas or gasoline in general because you burn more fuel but uh, not really sure how bad this thing's gonna be on fuel when we went to the dyno we did like six or eight pole, pulls and burnt in like two-thirds of the cell it's only a three gallon cell on this thing so it's not that bad especially being fuel injected it only takes what it gets not like a carburetor a controlled fuel leak but uh, yeah but anyways we're gonna uh, I'm gonna wrap this thing up uh, I'm gonna be staying up a little bit late tonight doing a little bit more tinker on this I gotta adjust some of the mounts for the hood just adjust them up and down and in and out I'm probably gonna I might throw the doors on it tonight so I can do adjust uh, in and out on the body to try and get it to line up nice with the doors and make sure the doors clear and all that stuff. But uh, we're going to see how ambitious I feel with that. I got to clean up because uh, my bench is a mess. We were knocking out a bunch of shit today. Yesterday we were so busy we ended up having to run to town think three times overall yesterday we forgot the uh the regulator for the welding gas so i had to go back to my dad's and get it because ricky forgot to bring his and it was just a shit show yesterday but we got a little bit done yesterday we ended up working on this thing till probably about 11 30 so it wasn't that bad and then we got into the pop so we decided to say the hell with the truck we'll leave it for the morning that way we don't screw anything up because we know how hard parts are to get right now. So, but uh, yeah, we're going to wrap this up. I'll see you guys in the next video. Hopefully uh, this thing's running. I was talking to the guys at ProTech and they're thinking I'm going to have my push rods and injectors by the end of this week coming up. So that'd be awesome. Then I'd be able to get it running early next week. I am off Monday to Thursday. And then... But I'll probably go back for overtime on Thursday, day shift, Thursday or Wednesday or both. Or we'll see. I won't be going in Monday night because uh, seven nights in a row is already enough. But uh, you never know what I'm going to do. I'm crazy enough to go in for eight. And I don't mind night shift at all. I, I like nights a lot better because I'll come home after night, shower, go to bed, wake up at like Say 2 o'clock, I can work on this thing till 5, I get picked up at 5.30 and away we go to work. So a couple hours a day is is good. As long as you're getting like half an hour, an hour a day on your projects, make a little bit of progress every day instead of trying to do the whole build in one day, it's going to help you keep motivation. You're not going to get tired of it as fast. A little bit with small improvements is uh, is the best way to do it, I find. So, we knocked out a lot this weekend, but there's three of us. So, Dale knocked out a little bit of stuff. Ricky knocked out a little bit of stuff. I knocked out a little bit of stuff. And this thing's pretty well ready to run, aside from injectors and push rods. So, other than that, I think that's it. I'm giving you guys all the updates that I have. Um, hopefully, everything goes well. Because, like I said earlier, I cut apart the holly harness i cut it and pretty well cut it in half shortened about two feet out of it and repinned it into bulkhead connectors that go through the firewalls so hopefully everything's pinned right because i'm not looking forward to it if i have to fix it but if i have to fix it i have to fix it it's it's as easy as that um i'm not Gonna get it almost running and it not run or a one sensor is reading wrong because I have a pin wrong and just say to hell with it and leave it. I'm gonna fix it. I'm gonna get it ready to go because I'm gonna be at the race May long weekend. Unless something catastrophic happens, I will be there. Reaper will be there. Low tracing crew will be there. I don't think you'll oh, oh yeller tanner truck's gonna be there. I think it'll just be Reaper. But uh you never know what we're going to have in stock. We're, uh, we're known to throw trucks together in uh, 
like two days. I'll say that much. If we have the parts, we'll throw it together. If we don't have the parts, we try to find the parts. If we can afford it, we buy the parts, get it together. That's kind of just how we do things, how we've always done things. We have lots of connections in the racing world, so uh, that's how we like to work. We do good under pressure. and uh, Yeah, so I hope you guys enjoy the video. Like, share, subscribe, hit the bell icon so you get notified whenever we're making more videos. Um, I hope you guys are enjoying following the build on this. I'm still new with YouTube, so... I, I enjoy it. It kind of gives me something else to do. And uh, sometimes I see stuff when I'm doing the videos for you guys that I didn't see when we're working on it. So then I keep mental note. Okay, I want to fix this. I want to change that. I got to rewrote how that is. And uh, it's good because I can step back, do a video. I can see something while I'm videoing, fix it. And then I, now I have more content for doing stuff like that or... I see some that might be a good point to explain how I look at things then I think it's a good way to make content but um, I don't know that's just kind of my thinking anyways thanks for watching thanks for following the build uh, Reaper's not going anywhere like I said it's always just gonna keep better and better and better um, after May long weekend I'm hoping we can start on my RV it's a 81 Winnebago, had a big block Chevy in it with a turbo 400. That got pulled out because the big block was locked up. We put a 5.9 common rail in it with a 47 RE with a full manual valve body. And uh, we were going to get that going so we have somewhere to stay. If, say for example, M and I decide just to pack up one weekend and go racing when everyone else is busy. We don't need a second truck to pull a trailer up there so we can sleep in it or sleep in a tent. I don't want to sleep in a tent. But, uh, yeah, we're going to leave it at that. We'll see you guys in the next video. And uh, have yourself a good night. Thanks, guys.